Hello everybody! I thought I would come back and do a little update. It's been a little while. Um, I've actually gotten um, some comments and questions and things that have started kind of coming in more than they had before. So I thought um, rather than answering the same questions kind of over and over again, um, I would just do a video of like frequently asked questions um, related to my surgery, my recovery, my current status, things that I have done um, in the meantime. And first of all, I am by no means an expert. I just have my own experience to go from. Um, I think that everybody is different and everybody's going to have different um, experiences and different ways that their body responds. But, um, and honestly, I've been kind of on this journey for about three years now. Um, and as time goes on, I can kind of tell that I don't, at least for me, I don't think that I'm done. <laughs> I don't know that this is uh, a, a kind of like a set it and forget it kind of situation, at least not for me and my my body. Um, I know there are lots of people and lots of ex examples of stories of people who have had awesome success and go, you know, back to extreme sports and very hectic lifestyles, but um, that's just not me. So anyway, um, I just want to thank everybody for checking out my videos. Um, I really never thought there would be that much uh, interest and it's interesting to, for me to kind of go back and look at some of the videos and just see where my head was at different times and stuff like that. So um, I thought I would go through some questions that I've um, kind of picked up over the last, you know, couple of months since my second surgery and a lot of these questions are buried in other videos and so I can you might not know to go look for other videos of mine but um I will try to like tag them at the top as they come up and like let you see what other um what other topics I talk about but anyway some of the questions that I have gotten are um a lot of them are based on like how long did certain symptoms or post-op symptoms last and it was, it's kind of hard for me to say that, um, you know, I, I talked about, I, I've had a, I've had two level disc replacement and then I, this year I had a fusion. My disc replacement was a harder recovery, um, maybe because I didn't know what to expect and also because it was a two level process and surgery. So they were in there longer. They were messing with more stuff. Um, I think that the process of having a disc inserted is maybe harder um, just like physically they have more things to kind of pull and tug and bang on you with um, to get it in there right but anyway the recovery from the disc replacement was harder for me than the fusion the fusion was almost like too simple but for me I was told by so many people right off the bat that this is bad and this is on your spinal cord and this is something you need to take care of quickly so after kind of getting over the denial of that, I was like, well, okay, we're going to fix this. And once and I kind of thought, okay, we will go in and have surgery and we will fix it. Like it will be fixed. And, you know, for the most part, the, the problem, the, the nerve problem is fixed, I think, but there's always consequences. And so I think that I will kind of always live a little bit with the pain that's there, the subsequent probably arthritis that is going to happen just because it's kind of forcing my spine to age a little bit faster. It's in a different position than it is supposed to be. Um, things like that. So, um, and you've, I've posted video or screenshots of my x-rays and stuff. And like I said, my, my spine is not perfect even after the surgery. My, uh, lordosis is really non-existent. It's pretty much just straight up and down. Um, I think if I could have had a little bit more of that lordosis, that curving forward, um, it might have had better results. But for whatever reason, that's just not how I'm built. And then the the fusion just pretty much kept things where they were. They didn't it didn't change that either. As far as when did like I can t I could tell a big difference when I you know first woke up. I, I think I did because again you're you have anesthesia, so you think everything's great, but. Um, I don't, like, I felt like the numbness, the weakness, the tingling, that stuff went away pretty quickly. I definitely had subsequent pain, and I have ever since. I mean, I've had some amount of pain in my sh spine 
and bones and down into my shoulders because of tension and, and whatever kind of ever since, but it's not, it's not debilitating. It's just something I kind of have learned to live with. So, um, it's an achy kind of pain that I could take, you know, ibuprofen all the time and probably feel a whole lot better or, or significantly better, but I don't want to do that. You know, ibuprofen has its own problems. Same with Tylenol, same with anything. So I mostly get through the day without much, um, medication or, or anything like that, but it's one of those kind of chronic sucky things. It's at least for me, um, I notice it and I think that, um, it's just a matter of how you're built and how, what your pain tolerance is and, and things like that. So, um, I definitely felt an improvement in the neurologic symptoms, which were the most pro um, troublesome. Like you don't want to lose your ability to hold a pen or to walk or to, you know, like those motor, um, and sensory things. So the pain is just kind of, uh, you know, collateral damage, I guess. Um, so it's, it's kind of always been there for me, but it's, but I've talked about it before. It's not been that bad. Another question that I got was, did I do physical therapy? And I did do physical therapy the first time around because after that first surgery, I wasn't getting a hundred percent relief that I thought I should be getting. Now I think that was because of the third, the next level down. But, um, I did do physical therapy and it was good stuff. Like it was, it was some muscle, um, you know, soft tissue work. It was definite, um, instruction, which is stuff, you know, but like, you don't think about it or you don't, I don't, I never thought it was that bad, but it's, it was postural awareness. It was scapular strengthening. It was upper extremity stuff. It was, um, you know, holding your, your neck in the right position and doing almost like baby crunches, but instead of for your abs, for your neck, um, just those kinds of things are, are kind of what we did. Um, and, and I wasn't, I didn't, make huge improvements. Um, I didn't get worse. It didn't make it worse. Um, but kind of, I had hit a plateau and they were like, well, you think, how do you feel? Like we just kind of stopped. Um, it wasn't making a huge difference, but I think that was because my pain and stuff was from the, the continued just degeneration of my spine. So, um, I have I did not do physical therapy specifically after the fusion Number one, with a fusion, I think you have to be a little more careful about your movement. Now, they put that plate in there, and that's really supposed to do all the fixing until your bones start to grow back. Um, but with the disc replacement, they were like, move as much as you want. We don't want anything to get stiff or stuck, or we want you to have movement. So um, I felt better about doing the, the physical therapy after the fusion, but I didn't do it right away. I think I did it like in this, like three or so months later, there's definitely a healing pro time that needs to happen. So, um, I did do physical therapy. I am a physical therapist by trade. Um, I am, I have, I'm licensed, but I never treated orthopedic conditions. I always, I treated children, pediatrics, neurological things like that. So, um, so I knew in my mind, like what was going to happen and how it worked and why, and that has helped me understand the anatomy of what was happening to me and, and understand that as well. But it's also made me really hyper vigilant and know like I can pick up on things in my own body and I can, you know, I know things about, about how that works. And so it makes me hyper vigilant when I'm starting to feel new symptoms or anything else that's, that's going on in my body. I kind of, I kind of know what's up before I have to even go to the doctor and get it checked out. Um, but yes, I did do physical therapy. Physical therapy can be very helpful. It can help you especially retrain, um, muscles and movement patterns and activities that you have lost because of weakness or things that you weren't doing before and you've kind of atrophied because of you weren't doing it because of pain or because of whatever. Um, physical therapy is definitely beneficial. Um, it shouldn't really make things worse though. Like if you're getting a ton of pain afterwards, there might be something going on or you may be doing it wrong or you might need another check-in with your doctor. Or you might be developing arthritis, which isn't really something you can, you can help that with, with therapy, but you're never going to change what's going on in your, at a bone level. It's going to require, that would be a surgery thing or a injection kind of thing. But anyway, that, that is what happened. Um, one of the questions is why did I get a fusion instead of a disc replacement? I think I kind of touched on that earlier, but, um, 
and I explained that in a, uh, maybe one of my early videos, but the, the disc replacement I did right away because that was what I have come to understand is the more, I guess I wouldn't call it gold standard, but it's moving that way. Like if you can maintain the motion in your spine, if it's appropriate for me, I was borderline if that was even appropriate because of the posture of my neck, because I didn't have that curve. So it's not really recommended or even contraindicated if you have instability in your neck, like if you don't have the ligaments that are holding your neck in position right, or if you have kyphosis or, or poor alignment. So for me, it was already kind of iffy if I should even have that to begin with, but I was glad that I could because of my age and I didn't want to, um, you know, I'm too considered relatively young at the time to have had this surgery. So, um, I wanted to do what I thought would be better for the long term. Now, be then I had this third level go bad and I kind of knew, number one, in the US, it's harder to do a three, a third disc. Like generally the discs are only approved for two levels. Now that's at a time. So could you get away with a third one later? Maybe it depends on your insurance and all of that. But, um, I went ahead and just kind of understood that my neck was already kind of in a precarious position. And so to go ahead and fuse it, it was already towards the bottom of my cervical spine. So I was, you know, that's where most of your motion happens. Um, once you get into your thoracic spine and you have ribs and you have things that are kind of preventing a lot of that motion, even my surgeon has said that it's very, rare to have herniations in your thoracic spine. That's not to say that it doesn't happen because I wonder that about myself too, because I have pain that goes down farther than my surgery um, levels. But anyway, um, so anyway, I kind of felt safe doing that and I felt a little more secure in just doing one, one level. So that is why I, I chose the fusion the second time around. Um, it was kind of recommended by the the surgeon, it, I, I, I was hoping that that would be the end of it. Um, okay, let's like kind of settle this last level in and let's kind of go from there. Um, I thought that the chances of anything else happening were super rare. So, um, so that's why I went ahead with the fusion just because three levels, I didn't want to add any instability to my neck already. Cause I was already, you know, things were just not perfect. So that is why I went ahead and went with that. So to have a little bit more certainty that nothing was going to move, nothing was going to go out of place, nothing was going to shift and cause any more problems. So, um, let's see, post-surgery tips, lifestyle modifications, things like that. Like I said, I still have to just kind of remember about my, my posture and my alignment and my strengthening and my sleeping positions and just everything that I do. It's really, really hard. I have kids. And so I feel like I'm constantly bending over and picking up toys off the floor or picking up children off the floor. Um, so I'm not really great about it. And I'm sure that that adds to my, my pain levels and my degeneration of, of my spine and, and aging and things like that. So, um, but, but some things that I had, I did a whole video on things that you should, or that I found helpful get that to have after surgery. So things like ice packs and straws and, uh, different things for like dressing care, wound care. Um, like, I think it's best to try to keep like, like the groceries in your fridge at, at like waists chest level so you're not bending down and getting things off the drawers and out of the shelves and other things way up high like especially like right after because it's just easier to kind of keep things keep your shoulders in place and, and stuff like that um I, I so I did a whole video about that that, that kind of talks about those kind of things nowadays for kind of maintenance there are some things that I do that help me a little bit like I when I'm doing repetitive tasks, like especially the dishwasher, um, I will sit down on like a little rolly chair and then I don't have to bend over into the dishwasher all the time. Um, I also have my, my getting my son trained to help me with that so he can do the lower level things, but, um, just doing those little kind of modifications. Um, same thing with like sitting, if I'm scrubbing the dishes, like I feel like it's better to keep my chest up and my body up than to lean over the sink. So I will sit down. Um, 
I have purchased, and these are just kind of things to try. Everybody's different. I purchased a, a brace that is for my arms, like it's straps that kind of keep my shoulders back and help with that postural reminder. Um, and I'll use that if I'm having a particularly bad day. And the other thing that I bought is a, you can find this on Amazon. Um, I don't know, I'm not recommending it necessarily, everything you go through, go through your doctor, go through your own personal situation. But for me, I have like one of those blow up collars that you, it's pneumatic, you pump it up and it kind of, it's like a cervical collar, but it adds some traction. And that has been helping me a lot lately because I've started to have new, new, I don't know. I don't know if it's another level, but it's definitely like stenosis symptoms. I've got issues with my legs, issues with like all on my right side, my arms get fatigued really fast. So now I'm kind of like, great, here we go again. But that's a whole nother, whole nother video. But um, it's helping me maintain and try not to have another surgery and try to at least feel functional. If I'm having pain or I'm having tingling or something, I can kind of sit and do that for a little bit. And it actually does really take the pressure off. Um, so I've, I've tried that for um, relief. It sounds really dumb, but like, even like a grabber, like, I don't want to sound like I'm like an invalid or something, but anything that can prevent you from doing all those repetitive, like bending and leaning and, and stuff like that, just squatting down completely is fine too, if you can keep your body upright. But, um, I'm not so great at that. I just want to get stuff done quickly. And, and even with the, the, the weakness that I've kind of have in my legs and, and glutes and hips, squatting isn't always the best either. It's just a little bit harder to get back up. Plus I'm old and I don't, I don't exercise like I should. So there are things that happen to me that you could possibly prevent on yourself if you just took the right preventative measures and kept your fitness up. Um, um, but definitely continuing with like postural exercises. I do like scapular squeezes all the time just to kind of maintain that strength in the back of my neck and, and shoulders because that's what gets that's what makes people slouch and that's you know so we have to maintain that a little bit um some stretching like people have asked about my range of motion and so this is with four five and five six um artificial disc and then a fusion at six seven um sometimes when i move my head i can I can feel a grinding and I've had this ever since the first surgery. So I'm guessing it's the actual like discs moving a little bit, but I mean, I can move here to here, here to here. This has a pull in the back. Like this is kind of not comfortable. I can go all the way up. Um, this is the one that's the most limited. And sometimes when I do this, I get a pop, but, um, yeah, I had a little click, but, um, so lateral is not easy, but, but for the most part I can move. And some people have been worried about what level they're having. And if you, I mean, this is stuff that's Googleable and anatomical. It's not really like medical advice or anything, but the majority of your motion in your neck comes from like the, the first couple of levels. So any lower level work that you're having done is it still accounts for about 50% between like levels C3 to C7, 50% of your flexion in any direction rotation, but you're sharing that 50% with all those levels. Whereas the other 50% is like just the top. Um, <clears throat> so you're, you're definitely limiting your motion if you're getting a fusion, but, and you, you do distribute that motion to other levels, which is what can cause the breakdown and the kind of domino effect. So I would actually be interested to hear from any of you who have had surgery a while ago and maybe are having another one or, or anything, however else you stumbled upon this video. I would be interested for my own knowledge, what is the long-term, what has been your long-term experiences? How has the pain been? How has the subsequent surgeries been? If, if you've had any, um, I think some people go on and have no issues for a long time, but um, I feel like I'm just kind of going to always know that it's there a little bit. So I'd be curious to know if, if other people have had experience and, and how does it change like over your lifespan? So, you know, I'm in my thirties. What am I going to feel like when I'm 40, 50? Like I may feel like I'm 10 years older than I am chronologically. So I just wonder, um, maybe I'll feel great. Maybe nothing, maybe, you know, this is life saving and I'm at least not stuck with spinal cord 
injuries and nerve damage. But um, anyway, I'd be interested to hear that if you guys want to comment and, and let me know if you have had similar experiences. How, what's your age? How, what, how old were you when you had um, your surgery? Things like that. So yeah, let's like have a conversation about it because it's it's still something that I wish I could just like put it behind me, but it keeps like creeping back in these weird, annoying ways. So I think I will end this video here. It's getting kind of long and then I'm going to do a second video right after this that's kind of going to go into my current status of, of what I've been experiencing lately. So I'm going to say goodbye for now on this one so I can get this one posted and then check out my next video that I'm going to post shortly after for kind of a current status update if you're wondering how things are going as of today. I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.